And joining us now is Father Wayne Pacey, Executive Director for Black and Indian Missions Office. Thank you so much for being with us, Father. Thanks for the invitation, Kevin. Maybe if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your job and the offices that you're um, charged with overseeing. Yes, the Black and Indian Mission Office uh, comprises three separate agencies of the U.S. Church. Uh, the first is the Bureau of Catholic Indian Missions, which was established in 1874 to promote evangelization in the Native American and Alaska Native communities. And then the bishops at the Council of Baltimore established the first national collection known as the Black and Indian Mission Collection. And, um, and then in 1907, they established the Catholic Negro American Mission Board. So we call it the Black and Indian Mission Office to kind of summarize all that and to promote evangelization in those communities. Great. And then the um, collection is a big part of your work as well. And maybe if you could speak on that and, and um, tell us a little bit about that and where the monies uh, go from that collection. Yes, uh, the collection is, the official date for the collection is always the first Sunday of Lent, uh, but the local bishop can um, take that collection up at his discretion throughout the year. And those monies help the bishop support evangelization in the black Catholic communities and the Native American and Alaska Native communities. And it, it's a great help to the local bishop because he's able to train catechists and, and to provide stipends for priests and religious women and men, buy catechetical materials, uh, train uh, priests, deacons, permanent deacons, and uh, a variety, buying gas uh, for the bus on the reservation to bring the kids to the mission schools, uh, paid teacher salaries, so it's a, it's, a great, it's a great resource for the bishops of the United States. And I understand too that you had a, um, a summit for diocesan directors too. To, yes, uh, yeah. uh, we had recently a summit in the Archdiocese of New Orleans uh, calling together our diocesan directors for black Catholic and Native American ministries. Uh, we celebrate this year 130 years of evangelization with that collection. And so it was a time to celebrate with our diocesan directors and kind of give them a, a little a shot in the arm to, yeah. to continue the enthusiasm and the, and the commitment uh, to the bishops and to the local people. Yeah. And other mm -hmm. new things that uh, you, you talked about, the um, immersion, immersion program too called SPLASH? Yeah, we're very excited about uh, what we call SPLASH 2. It's our second year hosting this immersion program for Native American ministry. And, We've returned twice now to the Archdiocese of Santa Fe in New Mexico. And we call it Splash because it's from a Thursday to a Sunday. Just a few days, just a splash. And we pray that this splash will become a great tidal wave of evangelization in the Native American communities. And um, we had a great, great uh, success. We nearly tripled our participation. Uh, we had nearly 20. The first time we had about six, so nearly tripled the attendance. And um, in New Mexico, in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, they're like 19 Pueblos. So we give the people, the benefactors, and those interested in learning more about Native American ministry an opportunity to meet Native Americans, to meet with our missionaries. The Archbishop joins us one night, and we meet with diocesan personnel to show the relationship between our national office in Washington, D.C., and the local church. And uh, next year, the date has not been set, but uh, Bishop Wall in the Diocese of Gallup has invited us to, um, to bring the program to his diocese. So we're looking forward uh, to Splash 3, and we welcome everyone uh, to participate, and they can go on, they can look at the website that you're posting uh, to get more information. Actually, and there's so many new things too. And I wanted to t talk to you about your experience uh, being um, the executive director and what he, you have seen over the years, and some of the changes you would see. Your hopes uh, for the future as you, as you continue on in this ministry. Yes, well, I've been in in this uh, ministry for about eight years now, and um, really, I'm learning. I'm learning more and more each day. The people teach me so much. First and foremost about the ways we need to reach out to them. And I think Pope Francis is also giving us a great example. And so I, I see where we're trying to empower people. We're trying to remind them, look, pastors come and go, but congregations are there. And so they need to, they need to come forward. They need to take the opportunity to be uh, properly formed and trained 
to be leaders in their local churches and in their local diocesan families. And so I see more and more people having a confidence that I find very beautiful. I see this blossoming, this blooming, if you will, of our Native Americans and our African Americans throughout the country. They're just so excited about, about the possibilities of what can actually happen in their local church. That's excellent. And we encourage people to, uh, when they see the collection, to give generously. Uh, and uh, also, if people want to find out more about uh, your work or the work of the uh, missions, where, where could they go? Well, they can go to our website at www.blackandindianmission.org. And we very much appreciate the support of, of all our benefactors, and we encourage many more to support the good work of the Black and Indian Mission Collection. Thank you, and thank you so much for being with us, Father. Thank you.